as she closed her eyes, an unfamiliar voice kept echoing her name. Ifoma. Ifoma. Curious, she turned to see who it was, only to find no one there. Maybe it was my mom. This is a story of Ifoma, a young girl who was lured unknowingly into witchcraft by her friends. In the bustling city of Abuja, there lived a young girl named Ifoma, who embarked on a journey that could change her life forever. Ifoma was an only child of a wealthy family who recently completed her basic education certificate examination and secured admission into one of the most prestigious secondary schools in the city. Excitement knew no bounds as she prepared to leave her home for the new adventure. From the moment Ifoma arrived at the school, she felt a sense of belonging. EJ brought new friends and cherished memories but none as significant as meeting Chioma. A senior in SS2, Chioma, though feared by many and even the teachers for her stubborn and disrespectful behavior, became Ifoma's best friend. They shared everything except for details about Chioma's family, which she always deflected with a playful promise of introducing Ifoma to them someday. As the time drew to a close, that Anticipation of vacation brought mixed feelings for Ifoma. She was both eager to reunite with her family and sad to part ways with Choma. The day before vacation, Choma visited Ifoma in her dormitory, bringing her candies and drink. Ifoma, chilled by her friend's gestures, thought her friend was being nice to her like always, consumed them without hesitation. She was very excited and started sucking and drinking whilst chatting with Choma. Ifoma was only 13 years old and in SS1. On the day of departure, all the students packed their bags out and were waiting for their parents to come and pick them up. Some of them were busily searching for transportation to go back to their various homes. Ifoma was supposed to go home with the taxi. While they were sitting and chatting about how they were going to miss each other, the driver came to pick her up. As she hugged Choma goodbye, she whispered in her ears that she was really going to miss her, but Choma cryptic words, you will always see me anytime you want, left a former person. She brushed it off and got into the car. On their journey back home, they found themselves caught up in a dreadful hold-up, leaving them stuck in a queue at the traffic, anxiously waiting for their turn to move. The situation grew increasingly frustrating, with each passing minute testing her patience. While they were in the queue, she realized one of the roadside vendors, who typically chased after cars, was staring and smiling at her. Curiosity arose making Ifoma wonder why the woman had been staring and laughing. Unable to understand the reason behind the woman's joy, she brushed it off. Deciding it was simply due to her own mesmerizing beauty, she couldn't help but admire herself, giving herself well-deserved accolades. If there was one thing Ifoma excelled at, it was praising and adoring herself. She truly believed she was as stunning as a mermaid, as if she had been crafted on a perfect Sunday. It didn't take long for the traffic to clear, and she made her way back home. Short her journey, Ifama felt restless, as if a snake or knife was slithering through her intestines. When she finally reached her home, she rushed to her bedroom to rest since she was very tired. As she closed her eyes, an unfamiliar voice kept echoing her name. Ifoma. 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 Curious, she turned to see who it was, only to find no one there. 
Maybe it was my mom calling me. She muted, making her way to her mother's room to respond to the supposed sermon. When did you come back? Ifoma's mother, Chiamaka, who was popularly called Mama Ifoma, asked. Gently patting her hair. Not long, mom. I was extremely exhausted and needed some rest. I heard you calling my name. Ifoma said, Called for you? Mama Ifoma asked, surprised. Yes, you did, mom. Ifoma insisted. I think it's just stress, my dear. I had no idea you had returned until now. Go and get some sleep, Mama Ifoma said, dismissively, leading Ifoma back to her room. Feeling exhausted and an intense pain coming from her stomach, she grabbed her stomach and collapsed onto her bed, closing her eyes in an attempt to sleep. Suddenly, she heard the same voice again, this time accompanied by a touch. Mom! She screamed, jumping awake and searching the room for the mysterious hand that had touched her. But no one was there. Fear gripped her as she anxiously wondered what was happening. Hurriedly, she made her way to her mother's room, seeking solace and safety. You are here again. I thought you said you needed rest, her mother, and my former question has if former fell heavily onto the bed. If former responded, her voice filled with fear. I couldn't sleep in my room. It felt like someone was repeatedly calling my name. Eventually, if I fell back asleep, this time without being disturbed by any voices. Before closing her eyes, she contemplated with the possibility that her mother might have been playing tricks on her. Mama Ifoma, overwhelmed by her worries, couldn't help but wonder if something had happened to Ifoma while she was in school, or if Ifoma was simply stressed, or if something had happened to her on the way. Her mind filled with concern. She voiced her thoughts aloud. The day grew darker, and Chinedu, Ifome's father, honked his car horn. Waiting for Musa, the gatekeeper, to open the gates, Mama Ifoma called out to Ifoma, who was still lost in a peaceful slumber. Your father is back, oh. Go downstairs and walk on him, she said. Ifoma woke up. Weakly making her way downstairs to embrace her father, who had just returned. Why did you come back? Her father asked, a smile spreading across his face. It hasn't been that long, but I've been experiencing severe stomach ache. Ifoma replied, her voice filled with discomfort. So his father suggested it might be hunger and instructed her to go to the kitchen and prepare some food for herself. After spending some quality time together as a family, everyone went to their respectful rooms for the night. As Ifoma opened her bedroom door, she apprehensively scanned the whole surrounding, searching for any sign of someone's presence. Finding nothing, she covered herself with a blanket and drifted off to sleep once more. In a seemingly dissolute place, adorned with red cloths and blasting, littering the floor. A group of scary looking women stood in a straight line with blastings on their teeth. Ifoma found herself in the middle of this peculiar scene. Her confusion and fear intensifying. What am I doing here? She silently questioned herself. Suddenly, a voice echoed from behind, revealing itself to be Chioma, her best friend. She was so confused and scared that she asked Chioma what they were doing there. But Chioma said nothing, but only laughed out loud. 
attempting to run, Ifoma felt a force preventing her from taking a step. You can't escape, Ifoma. This is your home now. This is your home the daughters of the river the find pleasure in your company. Shioma declared, laughing loudly. She signaled to the other witches who understood their assignments without the word. They forcefully held Ifoma's hand, forcing her to drink blood from a calabash. After numerous attempts, they successfully initiated her into their secretive cup. The next morning, she woke up with running temperature and bruises all over her body, which she couldn't explain to anyone. Her mom was so worried that she began asking Hendrik questions in a minute, which her daughter couldn't answer. As she was feeling so uncomfortable, her mom asked her if a teacher or anyone had beaten her in school and threatening her not to say anything. But her daughter only looked so downfounded. Even more attended an expensive private secondary school. Who would have wanted to beat a child leaving marks all over her body? Her mother gave her some self-prescribed drugs and followed her to the school that morning and complained. The school management played all the CCTV cameras available, showing no one was even closer to her daughter except her best friend, Chioma. And when they left the school, Ifoma had no bruises and went home with a taxi. The principal just advised Ifoma's mom to put more closer attention to her child and she should be more prayerful, that she should make her prayer life a habit. Another teacher also said maybe her body was reacting to something. Who knows? The mom sang the principal and they left the office. What would have happened to Ifoma? Her dad was so busy with work whilst her mom was seeking for solution. As, as she was preparing to take her to the hospital, Ifoma was healed mysteriously. Her temperature was normalized and the bruises were gone. Her mom was so surprised that she began thanking God because she had been praying silently for God to heal her daughter. After that day, each time she goes to sleep, her spirit leaves her body to attend their meetings. With time, if I'm out lost touch with reality, prepared to carry out any assignment given to her, she became withdrawn, disrespectful, and detached from reality. Her mother, distressed by these changes, couldn't control her anymore. Before my father, Chinedu, was often away on business, leaving Mama Informa to seek solutions alone. Before his behavior changed drastically. The witches proceeded to dress her in their uniform and apply powder to her face. You are now a full member of this esteemed witches' kingdom. Attend our meetings every night and await your next assignment. Her laughter grew louder as the other followed suit. A former suddenly woke up from her never ending sleep, a strange aura surrounding her. She proceeded to take her bath, got ready, and made her way downstairs to have breakfast. Normally, Ifoma would greet her parents, but this time around, she didn't utter a word to them. She ate her meal, leaving Chinedu and Mama Ifoma surprised by her sudden change in attitude. Ifoma, how are you doing this morning? Mama Ifoma asked, trying to understand the reason behind her daughter's mood swings. Instead of responding appropriately, Ifoma gave her a wicked look and hissed at her brother, stood up abruptly, and went back to her room. Her mother felt disrespected by her behavior, but decided to withhold her reactions since it was the first time her daughter displayed such attitude. Honey, what is really going on with her daughter since her return back from school? 
my mind for my inquired, looking at her husband, who was present but visibly confused. It was another dreadful night, and everyone had retired to sleep. Suddenly, a mysterious voice pulled from my awake. She hurriedly dressed in their meeting at her and vanished into thin hair. She then reappeared before her fellow witches, who were pleased to see her obey their sermon. The former walked through a blasting cloth, bowed down, and greeted the head witch with respect. I greet you, goddess of the river, the one who commands the obedience of the river, and the one who controls our sleep, the former said, bowing once more. After greeting her, she joined the line where the other witches stood. As a new member, as a new Ifo member, member, as a new Ifo member, we are required to bring new members, new members to our spirit kingdom. The head witch set, with a wicked smile spreading across her face. The witch house gave her a target and she had to fulfill her mission. If I'm a question, the furious queen mother. Either you comply, either you comply, or I take your breath away. The queen mother responded angrily. Parents need to be guided. Watch out for part two of the story. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to like share and subscribe for more cultural tales from the heart of africa thank you for watching